This is Pat Cosgrove for Cosgrove's Cosmos. Today I have another update on the Whispering Skies Observatory project. The contractor was able to come in and complete his interior work, so let's take a look at how that came out. Let's get started. Let's start by reviewing what the plan was for the drive system for the roof. I would be using the Sky Roof System by Interactive Astronomy, and this series of diagrams was created by Jim Collins. The first one shows both sides of the observatory. On the left, you see the west wall, which has V wheels and V track, and on the right side, we have the east wall, which has flat wheel and flat tracks. We decided to mount the motor in the back corner on a plate that would rise it above the height of the wall. Here's another view. It shows the motor. Uh, it shows it mounted on the plate that's higher than the wall, but it also shows a 4x6 beam which has been attached to the header for the roof, and suspended under this is a linear track that will be engaging the drive head of the motor so that the roof can move back and forth. On the far wall, you can see the main control unit, and you can see where magnetic sensors would be mounted. There would be a moving magnet attached to the roof, this magnet would move with the roof, and the sensors would define the fully open and fully closed travel positions for the roof. The motor was going to mount on a very strong half-inch steel plate, and the original plan was to weld it to the steel crossbeams. Unfortunately, our welder was not available, so we ended up needing to drill out the plate so that we could bolt it into the 4x4 uh, steel box beam. Next, we needed to mount the main drive beam. This was a uh, 4x6 laminated beam that was ordered special that we would be connecting to the roof headers, and to the bottom of this would be bolting the linear drive gear, which engages with the main drive gear on the motor. So we had to get the positioning of the beam and the motor mount just right. Mounting the motor was a little bit tricky. First, we had this steel plate, which is a half inch thick. Doesn't look at it necessarily in this video, but it's, it's extremely heavy. So we needed to be able to mount that onto the steel crossbeam and it had to be square and sitting true. Once this was in position, the next step was to lift the motor, which itself was extremely heavy, uh, up to the top of that plate so that we could bolt it on. With the motor in place, we now were in the position to start taking the linear drive gear and mounting that on the bottom of the beam. In order to do that, we had to open the roof manually a little bit to get to the corner. Then we snapped a line across the beam so we had it nice and straight, and we began to bolt in the linear gear. And of course, when I say we, it was really the guys who knew what they were doing while I sat in the background, cheered them on, and took video. Our intent here was to put the track in such that it was pretty straight, but then we knew we were going to have to go back in and adjust each section as it went by the head. As we got to the end of the track, we realized that there was going to be a section that was going to stick out. So we needed to trim some of the track so it would come together in a way where it ended at the end of the beam. Once we had the linear gear installed, the next step was to roll that gear by the motor and make sure everything was engaging properly. But before we did that, some effort was taken to make sure that everything was square on the motor. At this point, we manually rolled the roof down one little bit at a time, and each section of track was adjusted on its slots so that it fully engaged the drive head of the motor.
Once this process was complete, we needed to open the roof to its final, fully open position. At that point, we needed to mount a manual stop on the track, while the sensors should tell the motor to stop when the roof is completely open. There's no braking mechanism per se, so there could be some inertia, so you need to provide a physical stop. Now, I didn't want to put a final physical stop in there because I'm still designing one that will have passive interlocks. So for the time being, we created a temporary stop by bolting a block of wood onto the track. This is sufficient to stop the roof. You can see the main control system here, and one white wire goes over to the northeast corner. And there you can see the clamping system, and you can also see the magnetic sensor at the top at the end of that white wire. We trace that back in the opposite direction. There's another white wire that goes over the door and mounts into another magnetic sensor you can see here. And here's just a quick view of the linear drive gear mounted on the beam that was attached to the header all the way back going to the motor. At this point, we were able to do our first real test of the motor system. I pushed the button expecting the roof to open completely on its own, but the way it's set up, you have to hold the button down. That ensures the roof will continue to travel, and it will travel until the magnetic sensors engage and tell the roof motor to stop. At which point, the roof stops within about one gear of the motor, so there isn't an awful lot of inertial roll after you've disengaged the motor. But everything worked wonderful. And as you can see on this, the first time we opened the roof, we were getting snow in the observatory. We picked this day because it would be one of the few days with no snow. But of course, that was not the case. Now with everything installed, I can push one button and watch the roof roll off my observatory. And for the first time, I can get a feel for what the sky looks like with the roof rolled out of the way. Here's a north wall where eventually we'll have a countertop and cabinets. And right now a table is holding the computer. Since the biggest feature of this latest effort is getting the roof opening system working, forgive me if I put in several segments in here that show it in action. Just so excited to have it there, probably going a little bit overboard, so if you don't want to see any more, please just scan ahead a little bit. With the drive system complete, the next step was to finalize the mounting of the manual lockdown clamps. Originally, these were going to mount on a plate that was welded onto the crossbeam, but since our welder was not available, we had to make alternative plans. In the case of this one, we didn't mount it in the corner because the motor was in the way, and that wasn't too bad to mount. But for the other ones, we needed to have another way of mounting it. We took some cut off sections of the column and we mounted that underneath the 4x4 box beam. We mounted it onto one of the main columns in the corner. This gave us a nice wood platform to mount the bottom of our manual lockdown clamp. And if we have any upward forces due to wind, it's actually sandwiched under the 4x4 box column, so that'll hold it down. And it's also attached to one of the main columns in the corner. So this gave us a solid footing, despite the fact we didn't have access to our welder. And here is one of the installed lockdown clamps. You can see the hook is tied right into the main header of the roof, and the base of the clamp is down on this 4x4, which is also reinforced with a steel plate that goes further down the column and really anchors it. This just gives you a feel of what using the clamp looks like. A little bit 
awkward doing it one-handed, but you get the idea. You lift up the lever, and then the top swings down, and now you're fully clear to open it. Now, there's four of those that have to be opened, and you better remember to do all four of them. Putting it back on is as simple as just lifting it back up and then snapping it down into position. Once the drive was installed, I brought the observatory computer in for the first time. I put it on a white table here until I build my countertop, but this allows ASCOM connection to the drive system. This is a small section of the linear drive track that's in the observatory. It's a fairly thick piece of metal with gearing on one side. Again, pretty thick, pretty heavy duty gears. And it's offset with about a half inch spacer from the mount board. The holes themselves are slotted. And the idea is so that you can adjust the track back and forth so these teeth are well engaged with the drive gear. But you might be worried that over time, the wood that it's attached to could shrink or could twist a little bit. And so you want a little bit of adjustability. So the idea here is you can loosen this up and slide this back and forth and tighten it again over time. But the most important thing is try to keep the track from moving this way away from the drive gear. So we thought about putting some blocks of wood against the back end here to reinforce it. But instead, my friend Rick Albrecht designed a little camming system that you can see over here. This consists of two pieces of quarter inch steel. These act as a spacer. I've already drilled a hole here. And that will lift the cam unit to the height of the gear itself. This is the cam unit. Basically, it's just a circle and it has an offset hole. And because it has an offset hole as you rotate it, it has a camming action. These two holes are so you can put a wrench in it and really crank it down if you needed to do that. But the idea here is you put this on top of that. Then there's a heavy duty lag bolt that we'll put in. And since I can't drive that and hold the camera, I'm gonna pause this. Okay, now I've mounted the cam. It's not tight yet, so I can still rotate it. Right now it's at its minimum distance. And as I rotate it, the fatter portion will start to come in until I have contact with the back of the drive gear. And if I really wanted to crank that down or needed to, I even have this wrench with two bolts in it. That goes in here. And I can crank this down to get a little bit of leverage to get what I want there. For our purposes today, that's not really necessary. I just want to shore this up in its current position without affecting that. So all we really have to do now is tighten this down. And now I have steel that's reinforcing the track. And my idea is to put one of these about for every lag bolt we have all along the length of the track. So in the future, should we need to adjust it, I can loosen the cams, rotate them so they have minimum distance. Um, and then I can go ahead and adjust the track the way I want it. And then I can backstop it again so that's even more reinforced. So that's the idea behind the camming supports for the back of the drive track. Uh, camming supports are now installed in the observatory and you can see where they sit behind each bolt on the track, all the way down the length. I'm about ready to start installing the piers in the observatory. And this is what the pier foundation looks like. We have the pier foundation down in here, and then along the edge right in here, we have the slab. And there's about an inch or so of isolation between them where there's just the gravel fill. My uh, plan here is to excavate some of the edge here, get some of the gravel fill out, create a little bit of, of, an, of an opening. At that point, I'm going to use this foam pipe insulation. I'll compress it and put it into that gap. That'll tend to seal it up. Now, this will keep rocks and dirt from coming in, but it won't stop rodents who can chew through it. So I'll be wrapping the facing edge of this with a wire mesh, which is rodent proof. So that's going to seal up the edge right around the foundation right here. Now, this doesn't look exactly as nice as I'd like it to look. So I'm going to be lining this with an indoor outdoor carpet. In order to make that work, I've created a template. I'm 
It fits right in there. That will be used to trace onto the carpet. I'll cut it out, drop it in there. Then I'll cut a strip, which will go around the perimeter. Then I'll dress up this nicely. And at that point, I could drop the piers onto the bolt plate there and get things going. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I'm really excited that the project is coming to completion. With this last bit of work, the observatory is now fully functional. And my next step is to start installing the telescope piers and the telescopes themselves. Who knows, if we get some clear nights here, I might actually start catching some photons. So this is Pat Cosgrove signing off for Cosgrove's Cosmos, wishing you clear skies and excellent seeing.